with you people. I didn't watch Digimon growing up. I, I was in college, for God's sake. I didn't even watch Pokemon. Eh, Pikachu, Pikachu, fuck that shit. And yet so many people are like, oh, do Digimon, oh, do Digimon. No, seriously, that's how some of the emails go. Look, do Digimon, do Digimon, waves arms in girly fashion and squeaks in high-pitched pussy voice. What am I supposed to say about a show I don't know slash care anything about? And yet everybody's asking me to do it. There's only one person that can help me out with this. Are we invading another micronation? God damn it! What do you want? It, it says Joe in the sky. No, it doesn't. It says J O. Yeah, that spells Joe. Fuck it. Do you have Jesse Otaku's number? Yeah. Can you text it to me? Not until I get a Joe signal in the sky. <sighs> I deserve a Joe signal, critic. Oh, Cube. Someday we'll rule this world together. We just need to fix your ears first. <laughs> Hey, uh, look outside. Uh, yeah? You see that incredibly expensive spotlight being pointed in the sky? Uh, yeah, I thought that was for Angry Joe, actually. I'm doing Digimon, you wanna help or not? Oh, Critic, you can't come and do a show like Digimon and expect to properly represent it. You need to have grown up with it, seen a majority of the episodes, have had a good connection to the fan community that you obviously don't have, so... Yeah, this is far out of your league, even with my help. Well, if that's the way it has to be, I mean... Now, the movie, on the other hand... Digimon, Digimon Monsters, Digimon, 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 Monsters, Digimon... But wait, I thought in order to talk about the movie, I have to know about the show, right? Well, technically, this movie claims you can come into it without knowing anything about the show, or the franchise. They say they explain everything for newcomers. Do they? No, but that's part of why it sucks so much. It's actually three films with completely different plots and settings smashed together into one with only Smash Mouth songs and bad puns holding it together. So even fans of the show didn't like this movie? For the most part. Oh, Joy Bunnies. Let's not waste any time! Really? Because I'm quite content with wasting time. Let's take a look at this elephant dookie that is the Digimon movie. So we open on... This is this Digipal? Oh, fuck me, I forgot about this part. What the fuck is that? God, those Digimon are even more hideous than I imagined! No, no, this isn't Digimon. That's, um, Angela Anaconda. Boy, I thought Japanese animation would be a little better than this. Well, it's not exactly the movie. Angela Anaconda was owned by Fox as well, so they wanted to promote two turds with one bomb. Wasn't shown just in theaters for a quick gag, either. It kicks off every copy of the movie. This is seriously part of the flick. This is their best foot forward, people. It's like an extreme night terror if you passed out drinking moonshine while watching Terry Gilliam cartoons. Oh, so Mrs. Prince and Minnie Pooh think they can block the Digimon show with their big fat Digimon blocking heads, do they? Angela Anaconda, Digivolve to Angelamon! My god, it's still going! Goes on for four minutes! You know, at least the Pokemon movie didn't open with the biker mice from Mars motoring in to watch it on the big screen. What's next? SpongeBob racing in to watch The Last Airbender? Boy, Shyamalan needs to throw in the towel. I thought there were blue cats in this. Angela, Angela, so, when does the movie actually start? <laughs> Fry Christ Crackers? Is that a Digi rap? Don't look or listen to it, your brain will fall out! Junkers with Digi Will and Digi Vice in hand. There's a Digi Dynamic Force in Digi Land. When the Digi Pass and Digi Present collide, the Tom Tool Digi Side. Yes, this 
is especially bad in how cheap and corporate pandering it is, even for a children's anime. And that's saying a lot. The Digi Dudes will Digi Rule with Digi Ability and Digi You know, I don't think the rapper from Friday here has said Digi enough times. No, I stick Digi onto more words. It'll be funny. No, we know what we're doing. We're Fox producers. It's Digi Forced and Digi Contrived. No Digi brain cells will be left alive. There's no doubt about it. This is simply embarrassing. If only they could put a more dignified rap in there. We get our first scene of the movie. Who says there's no such thing as monsters? And I'm lost. Didn't take you long, did it, Phil? No, no, it's okay. This is just a flash forward to what you're about to see. Oh, so they're showing us what's gonna happen, like, near the end of the movie? Actually, more like the first ten minutes. This whole scene is pretty pointless, seeing as how we're gonna see it again in just a few moments. Maybe they figured the target audience would walk out if some violence didn't happen in the first few seconds. But after that, we're introduced to Kari, the resident Mary Sue and younger sister of the show's lead character, Ty. Not that you know that. This movie's not kind to the uninitiated. And yet, oddly enough, they never shut the hell up. I was right. It was our first digi egg. And on the other side of the world, Willis was getting his digi egg at the exact same time. The human squeak toy talks on and on throughout the movie, shouting exposition, and yet I still have no idea what's going on. I'm part of a team called the Digi Destiny. There were only a handful of us at first, but we've added a few members since then. That's Willis in America. His digital adventure, as well as ours, began that night eight years ago. Like, who the fuck is Willis? They keep talking about him, but apparently he's over in America while this takes place in Japan. Oh, trust me, we'll get to that. Joy. So Kari tells the audience that eight years ago, their computer dropped them off a strange delivery of spam and eggs. She and her brother are confused by the alien egg, but decide to take care of it while their mother is out. If anybody asks where that weird-looking egg came from, let's tell them our chicken coop is on a nuclear waste dump. One problem this movie and the TV show unfortunately share is their propensity for bad jokes. Not just unfunny jokes, but ones that don't make any sense when you start to think about them. Some were so bad they created plot holes in the story. I'll make three bean salad. <laughs> Nobody's coming over, Mom. That's all right. I only have two beans anyway. <laughs> it, it's alive! What? The egg suddenly hatches, revealing... My name is Kari. Kari. You two are the best friends I ever had. We're the only friends you've had. Uh, I wouldn't find that face hugging too cute. The last person that happened to didn't turn out so well. Oh God! Yeah, you may notice this movie has an eclectic soundtrack. Entirely inappropriate in every scene, but eclectic. I like to play late '90s bingo with it. After several cutesy minutes with terrible jokes... It can't get any worse. It just got worse. <laughs> An electrical storm blows through the city, causing everything to go haywire and the kid's Digimon friend to put on his serious business face. An entirely new face, in fact. You know that this Goromon isn't the one we became friends with later on. So he goes through the natural evolution from Tiny Bunny Rabbit into... Human-sized dinosaur. Uh, no. Well, let me explain. Digimon are supposed to be living packets of data, so the bigger the packet, like kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, etc., the bigger the monster, and they become stronger by eating, learning, and bonding with organic life forms, specifically human children. So, it's a Tamagotchi? Yeah, a Tamagotchi that kicks ass! My Gigapit never did that, I usually just let it die. This is why the show was awesome! Polly want a cracker? A really big cracker? And that's why this movie sucks. So Baloney the Dinosaur dukes it out with a giant parrot that just seems to pop the fuck out of nowhere while the kids cower underneath him. Okay, I have to admit, the animation in this fight is a lot of fun to watch. In fact, I'd even say it's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, most of the footage they cut together to make this movie was directed by Mamoru Hosoda, a unique and talented anime director who later went on to make The Girl Who Let Through Time and Summer Wars. 
His Digimon work was really excellent, and even in this choppy American recut, a lot of the sweetness and emotion of the original shines through. Are you gonna go on about this for a few hours? Uh, I usually do. Sorry, my uh, review. Crappy movie first, boring anime bullshit later. Later? As in never. Oh. So the two fight, and eventually the dinosaur wins. Now that's what I call a dead putter. It was a while before we realized that those of us who saw what happened became the Digi-Destined. It was even longer before we found out that Willis met his Digimon that same night. Okay, they mentioned this Willis kid again, but he's not anywhere in the friggin' movie so far. Why do they keep bringing him up? Okay, remember when I said they used three different Digimon movies to make this one? Let me guess. He's not in the other two movies they used, is he? Yep, he's only in the last one, so to try and pretend they have a cohesive narrative, they just keep talking about him. It's annoying as fuck. Speaking of which, flash forward four years to a completely different plot! We're done with that one, let's go, let's go! What? When did this movie become Castaway? You mean this whole scene had nothing to do with- What comes next? Nope. Or what comes after? Then why did they show it? Because it had a dinosaur fighting a parrot! How could you not show that? Like this! Asshat. Woman child! So, four years later, we meet computer whiz and fan favorite Izzy, farting about on the World Wide Web. Huh? Prodigious! A computer virus on the internet! <laughs> wow! Prodigious! A hippie in a Prius! Prodigious! Ben Kingsley in a bad movie! Prodigious! A thing that would very obviously be in another thing! Prodigious! A balding internet reviewer who screams a lot! Prodigious! An anime fan who obviously takes herself way too seriously! Asshat. Woman child! So this Kari girl narrates more about how there's a Digimon egg online. Digi-egg? Oh god, that's the official term. It, it was cute! They call evolution digivolving, too. And their little trinkets are called digivices. Yeah, and was it cute when Kid Icarus kept putting Icus at the end of every word, too? You can count on me to win the archery event, Princessicus! No, but he didn't have a dinosaur fighting a parrot. Argument over. <sighs> The Digi-Egg's been infected with a virus, and it's trying to destroy the real-world network. Ty doesn't have time to worry about, because he's trying to send an email to his crush, Sora, and the evil Digi-Egg won't let it go through. Oh, the horror. I'm going to a birthday party. I got my friend a pink power ring. My <laughs> Guess what show the company who dubbed this also owned? Yogi Bear? Thought maybe the ranger went gay. You try and tell a girl you're sorry and your computer shuts you down! Very <laughs> 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 naked ladies! I'm going for diagonal.